All right, Tennessee Frank here, and as long as I got to do this install, I figured I'd bring you all along for the ride. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tie you up, kidnap you, and toss you in the back of the truck, and you can kind of go with me on this deal. Um, I'm going to show you how we're supposed to install stuff and how easy this is supposed to be. Um, we got Kabunto. Kabunto. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I'm really feeling good tonight. We have Kabuntu booted up to a live USB. That's what we're in right here. We booted into our live USB. Um, you see up here upper left corner we got our install and uh, we're gonna go ahead and install this and after it's installed we'll come back and configure it real fast. I know I've done videos on this before but I just want to show you how it works and show you that we have like zero problems once it's installed. Um, stuff I've been going through lately, I should not have to go through. I don't go through it with this distro. I should not have to deal with it with any other. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead. We will get this thing started. Go ahead. We'll click our installer. Give it a good double click. And it pops up. And yes, we do need English. So we will click our English. Yep, English US keyboard. Go ahead, continue. We will go ahead and we should already be connected to the internet. Looks like we should already be. Um, the way you can check real quick to see if you are connected is to go in, open a terminal, and let me go ahead and see if I can blow this up, make it bigger. You will do a ping, and then you'll do 8.8.8.8. That is Google. Hit enter. See how it's returning so many bytes coming back? So we are already connected to the internet. You will hit control C. That gets you out of there. Clear. And then we can go ahead and close our terminal. Yeah, whenever you want to check in Linux to see if you are connected to the internet, open a terminal, hit ping, space, 8.8.8.8, or 8.8.4.4. They're both Google, um, so they, they both work. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll continue because we're already connected. Now, you can do a normal install. It'll install all the packages and all the utilities and everything. 80% of which I never use. So I don't want to mess up the uh, disk space. So I go ahead, I click minimal install. That makes it easier. I'm not going to bother downloading the updates because even if you do that, you'll still have updates. So uh, we're not going to bother with that. But we are going to do the third party. This is what I was talking to you about in my other videos. Third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi hardware, media formats, um, all kinds of extra stuff that helps run your media players and your Wi-Fi and audio. This is something that in a lot of Linux distros, they don't even give you the option. They want to stay totally free. And I understand that. They don't want anything proprietary. Um, but... A lot of times you got to have some proprietary stuff to get your system working. So go ahead, check that box, hit continue, and it's going to go out onto the interwebs. It's going to pull all these things in, and it's going to look at our hardware and see what we need, and then we will get moving along here in just a second. Okay, you can see we got PC Linux already on here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say let's use the entire disk. I don't want anything left over. So it's all going to be Kubuntu. And you'll notice there's no swap partition because in the newer versions of Kubuntu, I believe since 17.10, um, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, all the offshoots, the spins, have been using a swap file 
instead of a swap partition. So uh, that makes it kind of handy. So we're going to use entire disk, hit install now. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? You're fixing to wipe out your hard drive and put Kubuntu on there. And I'm going to say a big hell yes because I can't deal with these other operating systems. So I'm going to hit continue. And that's going to get us started. Now we'll go ahead and we'll set our time zone. I'm over here in Phoenix, so we'll hit continue. Username, good old Tennessee Frank. We'll make a super secret password here. We'll confirm that password. And I don't want to name it all that. I'll just go ahead and name it M90Z since that's the system it's going on. Good enough. And we need a password to log in. Then you hit continue. And we begin our install process. It's just as simple as that. It's, it's not rocket science. Uh, a lot of people think Linux is just really difficult and oh my god, what am I going to do? And you know, Windows 7 is going to die in January and I don't want to spend money on a new computer to run Windows 10. Download Linux, put it on a uh, USB drive and install it. It's just that simple. Just a few clicks. I mean, it, it's nothing. And once it's installed, if you go with a good distro, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen the turds. Um, stick with the uh, the gold nuggets and stay away from the turds. Uh, you'll you'll be able to get something that's going to run good and do what you want it to do. Uh, like I said, people think Canonical is the devil. They're not. They're just an organization that I feel is helping to promote Linux and and put out a quality product. I mean, uh, you you need a certain size organization to uh, turn out a decent product. Uh, you're, you're not going to have three or four people sitting in a back room somewhere turning out a Linux distro and being able to keep up on every little bug and every little issue. Um, so, I mean, if you got the manpower, yeah, you can make a good distro. And that's why anything that's Ubuntu or uh, the offshoot of Ubuntu, like Linux Mint, seem to be pretty good. They seem to be solid. They seem to run really well. Um, we're almost finished copying files. I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll cut this video and come back once we're installed. Okay, we are just finishing up right now. Uh, you can see the, the last little bit of stuff is starting to install. Getting everything configured. Uh, we'll be ready to reboot here in just a second. Uh, before we do that, I will go into Dolphin right here, and I'll put this video, this is the video I'm recording right now, over onto a USB, and then we'll boot into our new system, and I'll open the uh, simple screen recorder back up, and we will re go ahead and uh, take care of getting the, the setup and everything done. I don't know if you hear my cat, he's in the background crazy guy I know you're crazy he daddy big man oh you are you're big man I know yeah he loves to talk he he talks he talks a lot to me he's getting older too he's about 12 um, that's bunny that's the the big one if you ever uh, see my big big male cat that's bunny and that's him he likes to talk um, anyway we got restart now I'm going to go ahead and say continue testing uh, because I have to go ahead and take this and, and put it over here on a, a, uh, a USB stick. So let me plug a USB in. Let that go ahead and open. We're going to open her with file manager. There it is. I'm going to drag this over. Okay, we're back on the other side. I forgot you need to like save the file before you move the file so that's why I kind of cut off quickly but uh, here we are in the brand new system this is what you get on install this is what it looks like uh, first thing that I like to do is come down here and get rid of this I, I'm not crazy about this style of menu you may like it if you do I mean run it 
it's it's I mean it's okay I guess but I'm not real crazy about it so I go to alternatives and I'll click dashboard switch and now we got the menu that I like um, and now one of the the next things I'll do is go ahead in my dolphin file manager I will right click pin it to task manager down here and Firefox I will go ahead and uh, pin to task manager that way they're handy I can get to them that's two of the things I use more than anything and that way I can remove them from favorites uh, Kate I don't need so I'll remove it I'm not gonna worry about uh, how, how much we're running right now as far as how many megs or how the processors are I know it's gonna be higher than normal because we are recording a video discover is gonna be going away um, so we will get to that in a second let's open our console first thing I want to do on my console is configure it so I'm gonna edit my current profile go into appearance I like the black on green uh, it's just me I mean it's just the way it is I'll bump her up to about 30 for the transparency and for fonts I like the hack it's a nice font I like it bold and uh, I'll bump her up to about 14 that way I can see what's going on so now we can kind of see a little bit about what's going on first thing I want to install is my drop-down terminal so I will do sudo app install and that is yakuake y-a-k-u-a-k-e it's gonna ask for a password so you put your super secret password in there and it goes out and it grabs it from the repositories and it installs it just that easy now we have Yakuake installed so I can go ahead and clear that close this out come down here type in Yakuake there it is couple letters and there it is and you'll see it says uh, welcome F12 is gonna be our hotkey for this sounds good to me go ahead and width I'll stick her at about 60 height I will put her at 70 and there we go here's our drop down terminal anytime I need a terminal I just hit F12 boom there it is easy peasy I love it makes it so simple so next thing we're gonna do is get our restricted extras in those are gonna add uh, Microsoft fonts and other Ubuntu restricted extra packages that help with video play audio play what have you so sudo app install Ubuntu restricted extras super secret password that's gonna go out these are all the packages we're gonna be installing and if it's a capital that's your default capitals yes so just hit enter oh, failed to fetch I think I know what happened well we're connected let's check our ping yeah we're connected let's see what's going on here let's do an update first let's update our archives maybe that's got something to do with it pull in all our new packages we'll do a distribution upgrade we'll get all those out of the way see that 345 packages five newly installed so this is gonna take a while um, while we're doing this I'm gonna go ahead I'll pause the video and we will come back on the other side okay and you see we are done right there um, let's see if we can get a uh, restricted extras in now that we have updated and upgraded everything so hey it found them we'll get them put in that's gonna give us a few extra codecs and stuff we might need um, it gives you uh, LibreOffice fonts, 
course, because it is proprietary, there is a little EULA a license that you have to agree to. Um, but personally, if it makes my system run and it's free, I don't have to pay any money, yeah, fine. I'll go ahead and agree to their little license. I mean, it's not a huge deal to me. All righty, it's in, see, you see right there, Microsoft Core Fonts Installer. That comes in handy when you're doing LibreOffice documents that may have uh, like Word fonts from Word documents. So let's go ahead and clear this so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to keep installing. We're going to do hard info, which basically is a program that lets you look at your system, tells you what your hardware is, tells you what your kernel is, what operating system you're running. Um, you can do benchmarking, which uh, will let you know how fast your system's running. Just a neat little program, and I always throw it on there just to have, just to so I can you know see what's in my system. But yeah, it's a it's a good program. But uh, this is one of the beauties of Linux. I might want to add this in here. Um, you watched the last video on PC Linux OS. It was running good on USB stick. I installed it on bare metal, not so much. A um, lot of little issues, a lot of things I don't have to deal with with Kubuntu. Like uh, sudo, super user do. I mean, I, I don't have to worry about that. It's already installed by default. I didn't have to jump through hoops to get that in. You see my panel down here. It's not all jumpy. I mean, I'm moving around. It doesn't flutter and act crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this, this just seems to be a really good solid distro. So, uh, let's install my favorite music player, and that is Clementine. We'll get that installed. And I don't use it much, but it is cool if you want to stream a little music or uh, play, you know, CDs or something. And you can even uh, put a file on your computer and then uh, have a playlist and put it in Clementine. So it works pretty good. And uh, you see down here, we're being told we need to restart our system. Um, that's probably because a new kernel has been installed or some new uh, firmware or something. But we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's get done uh, doing our installs. Go ahead and install HTOP. That's real handy to, to check and see how your system is doing. And we're going to get that notification every time something installs. Get Audacity put in. That's good if you want to mess around with audio. Um, you want to, you know, convert audio. Uh, maybe you got a bunch of uh, CDs you want to make into MP3s. You can use that. Um, you got audio you recorded and you need to kind of clean it up or just about anything. I mean, recording music, you can record like your guitar or something and add effects to it. Yeah, Audacity is a good little program. Of course, we already have Simple Screen Recorder. We'll put Caden Live in here. I'm going to need that to edit this video. So let's get it installed while we're thinking about it. Just take a second. Um, I would say out of all the distros that I have messed with over the last seven years, uh, Kubuntu has been one of the more stable ones. And MX18 has been a pretty good one. Uh, the MX guys, they, they use a Debian base with the XFCE desktop and they're fairly stable and if you don't mind that kind of desktop with the, the standard menus, MX18 is a good way to go. They have a, a good control center where you can add extra codecs to there to play videos. Um, you can get uh, extra drivers and stuff. Let's say you're running uh, an NVIDIA card or something. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good way to go. Uh, so if you, if you don't care for KDE or don't want to mess with Ubuntu, give MX Linux a try. Uh, that's probably like my second favorite distro. But uh, I think I'm going to try and stop all this jumping around if I can. Uh, I may play with something in VirtualBox every now and again just to do a video for you guys. But for the most part, 
I'm going to stick with Kubuntu. It's been working well. There's no reason to jump around. You find something that works, I mean, stick with it. I mean, there's just other than curiosity, and like I said, I can do that in VirtualBox. So uh, I got quite a bit more software. I got a LibreOffice, Gparted, HP Lip GUI for my printer, VirtualBox, Shotwell, Fay, Transmission, which is the BitTorrent client, uh, Synoptic Package Manager, Gedit, and GDebby, and then I got a set of root password. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here. And then we'll be back on the other side of all that installing, and I'll show you how I set the desktop up. Okay, and we got everything installed. I went ahead and cleared terminal, moved it back up. Uh, now we can kind of start configuring everything. First thing I want to do is go ahead and go into Dolphin, and that is our file system manager. Go to Control, Configure Dolphin, Services. I want to add Delete. Much rather have Delete as to uh, have things just sit around in trash. I I see a lot of file systems and a lot of like, uh, especially with Windows, where people will put stuff in trash. Trash is overflowing. They think they got rid of it. I can open their trash and read everything and see everything they put in it. Um, you delete it, it's gone. So I'd rather use delete as trash. I also set this to use common properties for all folders. Um, I like that better. And then let's see, view modes, where do we want to go? No, general. Previews, I want to make sure and set up video files, text files, images. Anything you'd like to kind of take a preview at or a look at, um, you go ahead and set that up, apply. Um, view modes, icon size, default and preview. I think that's pretty good. I think I got, uh, got things set up pretty good. So we can go ahead and make these a little bit bigger. Now that I have delete, I can go ahead and dump templates. And it's going to hit you with this once. You just go ahead and check the box. That way it doesn't bother you anymore. Okay, that's taken care of. We'll go ahead and get rid of the home folder off the desktop. And the trash. Don't need that. So now that's cleared up. Now let's go get some wallpaper. I can't stand this wallpaper. Configure desktop. Get new wallpaper. Uh, my go-to lately has been one called KDE Paint. I love this wallpaper. It, it kind of looks like a superhero logo. And we'll go ahead and scale it. There we go. Now she's looking good. Um, this is the show desktop down here. What that's for is say you got this open, it gets rid of stuff. You just click it real quick and it, it moves stuff out of your way. I don't really care for that. I can just go up here and drop it down there if I want to get rid of it. Um, so we will go ahead and configure panel, panel settings. I want to make sure this is about 40, which is uh, about right in here. And I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to remove that. So we'll dump that. And panel settings and we'll go ahead and lock everything in since I got everything where I pretty much want it. Now we can go ahead and let's go into system settings. This is going to be our next little fun spot to be. And I'm going to set this up for icons. This makes it easier for me to get around to see all these icons. Workspace theme, I want modern. Pull that in. Install that. Takes just a couple seconds. And like I said, there, there's a bunch of other themes here. Um, you can go ahead and just like look at ratings, see what the, the top rated themes are. You know, there, there's tons of themes you can do. But I just, I like the modern theme. It just looks good to me. It's a dark theme, which I like. It's easy on the eyes. Desktop theme, I like my oxygen. 
Gives me that nice clear panel down here. Makes it look good. Splash screen. Yeah, we'll just stick with Breeze. I don't need anything fancy. Fonts. We're going to go in through here. We're going to adjust all fonts. Go to size. I'll normally bump those up to 12. And this is giving me a little warning. Don't show that again to me. I know. Um, icons. Pull that open. We're going to get a new icon theme. My favorite lately has been buff. B-U-U-F. Buff. And uh, it's, it's a pretty cool theme. Let's see if it'll find it here. Try it again. Well, it's not pulling it. Yeah, Wi-Fi's up. Let's try it again. There we are. Just took a second. Buff Plasma. We're going to install that. And some of these icon themes take just a minute to install. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this real quick just to show you the difference. Right now I think we're in like breeze icon themes. You can see how the icons look. Let me make them a little bigger. We'll go ahead and uh, let's move to buff plasma, apply, all settings, close this back out, and there they are. See, it gives it like a kind of a, I don't know, caveman look or an older look or something. I just, I like the way these icons look. They're just, they're kind of cool. So we got that done. Application style. Window decorations. Uh, Breeze is okay for me. But I do like to have my tile bar on the left. So we will go ahead and do that. And that moves the tile bar over to our left. Desktop behavior. This is an important one. I don't care for tool tips. Don't really care about desktop effects. And I don't want things maximizing when they hit the edge of the screen. Um, let's see. Lock screen. Don't want a lock screen. Virtual desktop set to 1. Activities. Privacy. 1 month. Apply. Do not remember. Window manager. We want to have our windows open in the center. Just makes it easier to find them when they do open. Uh, let's see. Account details. This is what I was saying about in the other video I did with PC Linux OS. This actually has a user manager. And you can see I have administrative privileges already. I don't have to hunt down sudo doer or anything or jump through hoops to be able to do sudo. I'm already there. If I want to add a user, say your wife wants to get on the computer, you can add her. You can give her administrator privileges or not. Let's say she's all thumbs and she tears everything up and all she needs to do is use, uh, you know, maybe VLC to watch a video or go on uh, Firefox to check her email. You can lock her down and just make her a regular user. Uh, you don't have to give her privileges to install stuff or, or remove stuff or mess with anything. So that's nice. Connection, something that a uh, little secret that we picked up was to go and make it for all users, not encrypted and apply. Um, it just seems to make the Wi-Fi work a little better. Uh, at least it did. I don't know if maybe they got whatever the bug was fixed, but that's just something you do. Um, also, while we're in here, startup, auto start. I want to add a program. I want to add Yakuake to that. There it is. That way, when I start my system, that'll start up so I can I'll have my drop down terminal available. Uh, input devices. I want to turn on my numbers lock 
because it's not a laptop. On a laptop, you might not want to do that because uh, it can mess with your keyboard. But if you've got a standard keyboard on a desktop, go ahead and turn that on. Um, Display Manager. Of course, here's where your compositor is. This is running the same OpenGL and everything just like in uh, PC Linux OS, but I'm not getting that tearing. Um, just It's not giving me screen tearing. I don't know why. Uh, maybe there's codecs and stuff installed that's taking care of that, whereas in the other system it didn't have it. Of course, here's your multimedia. If you need to do any video or audio tweaking, there's where that would be. Um, power management. Don't want that. Don't need it to shut down or do anything honky when I'm not messing around with it. Uh, see, 10 minutes. I don't want it to shut off in 10 minutes. I may run to the restroom or go make something to eat for 10 minutes and come back. I don't want to have to unlock my computer. I mean, I'm the only one in the house. Um, removable storage and all. It's pretty much configured good out of the box. Don't have to really mess with none of that. So we'll go ahead and clear that off. So now we are pretty much set up. Um, this is the way that I would run it. I got everything installed that I want. Um, I got all my icons and my wallpaper. Everything's set up the way I would like it. Everything's working. Um, I don't have to worry about installing or jumping through hoops or tweaking anything. So this is just kind of how easy it can be and how easy it should be. Uh, 2019, we should not have to fight with Linux distros anymore. They should work. They've had plenty of time to get this stuff done. I mean, Linux pretty much uh, came into being 91, 92. So by now, they should have this stuff locked down. So uh, I need to do a, a system restart down here. Oh, one quick thing. Um, we do have Synoptic. I'm going to open that. And I'm going to show you a little trick here that makes living with Kubuntu a lot easier. Or any other KDE distro that has Discover. Um, you go ahead, go in here. You search, you type Discover. Now well, let's try over here. Okay, I know it's here. There we are. There we are. There we are. Discover. Um, Discover is here. Check that. And there is another Discover. That's not the right one. Unmark those. Dang, what have they done? There was a way that I was removing Discover out of here. So I did not have to deal with it. Maybe it's capitalized. Huh. Yeah, uncheck that too. I don't want to. Oh well, I I had found it before. I'll have to look around. But you can remove Discover. Um, there's a way of doing it, and it makes it real super easy to uh, not have to deal with it interrupting you whenever you're trying to do updates through terminal. Um, but yeah, uh, well we'll we'll find it later. Uh, it's not a huge deal. But yeah, th this is how easy it is to throw a Linux distro on your, your setup. I mean, there's no big deal at all. Works easy, works... I mean, if you get a good distro, you have no problems. So uh, yeah, I hope you found this a little helpful. Maybe uh, go out and download some Linux. Give it a try. Find a good one like uh, Kubuntu or MX18. So like I always say, either we stand up for our rights or we can sit by and watch them go away. Y'all have an awesome evening. We'll talk to you later. Tennessee Frank, out of here.